Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you some great auto hockey scripts that utilize UWP API to perform optical character recognition. Please note that this only works on Windows 10 and if you're interested in this topic, please continue watching. Alright, welcome back. Now first of all, I'm going to give you a quick rundown of what UWP API is. UWP stands for Universal Windows Platform created by Microsoft. The purpose of this platform is to help develop universal apps that run on Windows 10, Windows 10 Mobile, Xbox One and HoloLens without the need for the apps to be rewritten for each operating system. This OCR function seems to be one of them. Now the upsides of UWP OCR are no external programs required such as Tesseract and it's faster than Tesseract. Now downside of UWP API OCR are um, that it only works on Windows 10 and possibly Windows 8. And it also cannot be trained for better accuracy as opposed to Tesseract. And also there is no page segmentation mode available for your choice. Now watch my video on Tesseract OCR in the link above if you want to know what page segmentation mode means. All the scripts that I'm going to show you today um, are from this AutoArchy post. It involves a lot of DLL calls which is a complicated auto hockey function that I may get into in the future, but right now it's too early to cover it. So what I'll do today is that I will demo these scripts in today's video and walk you through how you can use these. So to access these scripts, just go to my website and go to archive auto hockey and then go down all the way to where Juho's auto hockey script demo number 19 is. There are one, two, three, four, five scripts that I'm going to show you today. So I will start off with the first one. Now I'll copy this and go back to site and use this as my test script. So once I save it, now let me just go to where my folder um, well my script is saved as you can see I've got two files here capture PNG and capture Korea PNG now the first command what it does is it shows the available languages and those mean the languages that show up when you press the start button and the space now I've got this Hong Kong English I don't know what that is um, it just got added because I, I live in Hong Kong I suppose um, but I really only added the US English keyboard and also the Korean um, keyboard myself. So that's going to show me what the languages that are available on my desktop is and then the next one is going to perform an OCR of this file capture.png and then the next one is to just to demonstrate that you can also provide the EN that which stands for English as an argument to perform um, an OCR using that language and KO represents Korea um, and this show available languages message box is going to show you uh, what two letters you have to use in order to perform a foreign language or English OCR by default, the second command here, OCR capture.png, will be done in your default language on your desktop. So let me go ahead and run this. And the first message box that I get is en us. Ignore the dash us and just put in en if you want to do English. Now, ko is the ko for Korea. And the next message box that shows up will be the OCR result which is the same as which is from this source file which appears to be pretty accurate and then the the next one is going to be the same but for this one I have provided the English argument and then the last one is going to be the foreign language Korea which um, has cut out the last bit here but more or less it's pretty uh, pretty reliable. So that's how you use the first script and this is the way to perform an optical character recognition on saved image files. Now moving on to the second one and just delete this and then go back out to my website. Let me just downsize this and then the second one now this one does a OCR on a specific region 
or the entire screen. Now, the entire screen is represented by a underscore screen width and a underscore screen height. The first argument that you provide is the starting point as in terms of the x coordinate. And then the next argument is the y coordinate of the starting point. So if you provide a coordinate of 0 and 0, then that means you're going to start from the top left hand corner of your screen. And then a underscore screen width and then a underscore screen height represents the width of the screen and the height of the screen which means I'm going to perform optical character recognition on the entire screen you see up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and go to Sydney Morning Herald and then perform, let me just minimize this, and then run the script, in which case I'm going to get this long message box that did a uh, character recognition on the entire screen here. So it starts from Juho Lee here and then you've got some weird uh, results like C which may be this close button and then it totally missed the Australian breaking news or it could be down here somewhere. Um, let's have a look. Sydney politics business subscribe. Let's go Sydney where is Sydney? Sydney politics business world life culture. So this is how you get the um, so this is how you perform the OCR on the entire screen. Now, if you want to just do say I don't know um, six hundred by six hundred, and then starting point at x coordinate of one hundred and y coordinate of one hundred. So it's gonna be something like I don't know something like this much. Let's go see what we get. Um, April, so it must be, so it must be around here, April, it missed the A, and then Sydney, where Sydney, Sydney is here, Good Weekend Podcast, that's COVID-19, so it, I think it did something like, like this, yeah, anyway, so that's how you do a specific region, and so that's that, let me delete all of this, and then go back out to my website and show you the third script which gives you okay so this is quite useful now if I paste it in and run it the there is a hotkey that is waiting for you to initiate which is the shift and the left mouse button so how this works is by pressing the shift button and then dragging to designate an area by using the uh, left mouse key, left mouse uh, button, sorry. Um, it's going to, once you lift it, it's going to perform an OCR on that specific region. And it does it pretty instantly. It's um, a little faster than Tesseract. Tesseract is pretty fast too, but this, I think, because it doesn't require any installation, it's, it's quite fast. So you can get results like that and like that. Or if you want to do a lot, you can just designate a lot of um, real estate. Now, so that's how you use that one. And then let me go and show you another one, which is like the previous one, which is uh, performed by using the shift and the left mouse button as well. But the difference is this one does a OCR constantly on the designated area. So you can see that the border stays still, and then you get the tooltip that gives you the result of the OCR. Right now, this is not going to change, so this is not doing anything. So what I'm going to do is um, go to Coin Market Cap, and I think I've exited out of the script. Yes, I have exited out of the script. I have an emergency exit in the script that uh, exits out of the script by pressing the exit key. Now, because these figures are changing all the time, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just select this area. So I'm going to see as soon as the price of Bitcoin changes. There's a wedding. Today's Sunday, so I guess there's not much trading going on. Okay. Takes too long. Okay, let me get out. Run the script again. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to maybe designate more than just one price. So you can see that the 
So there's a bit of a mistake here, which I think is, okay, recognize it correctly. Uh, but as you can see, the figures are being updated. For some reason, this is being recognized as uh, some weird number, right? But for the other ones, you can see that they are working correctly. Let me see if the price changes. Okay, the Bitcoin price changed just now and it's updated the value. Now I can just also just scroll down because the area that I have designated is still going to be the same. So whatever that falls under the area will be captured and re uh, and shown in this tooltip here. So you can see USD, USD coin. U USD coin at one dollar okay it's a dollar um okay so that's how you use it if you scroll down even more you can get the yeah you can get the results like that okay so that's the fourth script and on to the last one what was the last one last one is okay this is a pretty cool script which will um find the location of a text that you provide to the script. Um, let me just show you how it works. So I'm just gonna, okay, if I run this, I'm gonna get this, uh, I'm gonna get this uh, input box. So let me just cancel out of that and I'm gonna move this out of the monitor um, onto another monitor and then run that. And so what this does is it's going to actually, let me just do a search of so I get COVID, COVID, there's one COVID here. Okay, there's one COVID here and then there's another COVID here. So let me go ahead and run the script and look for COVID. Now, just be careful because what this does is if the input box is sitting on top of the search term that you're going to provide, it's not going to identify this one, All right? And so if I type in COVID, now the first thing it's gonna find is probably that one, the one in the search box up there so if I go ahead and press OK it's going to say I found something here which is going to be that so you can see how the mouse cursor has moved to the the result and then the next one oh okay so what happened just now is that because I have entered COVID like that um, in the input box on the screen right and that's why um, it thought it thought the word COVID was also there. So I'm just going to move this input box out of it and then run a search again. I just search again. Now it found that somewhere. Okay, it's found that one. And I did a search. Um, I didn't I didn't type in COVID in capital letters, but it somehow managed to find that as well and then the next one, and then it missed the last one. So it's not perfect, but it does do, it does perform fairly okay. So let me just go ahead and maybe, uh, police or Sydney. So it's gonna be a love Sydney, there we go. So let me just go ahead and run a search for Sydney. I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna type out Sydney here and then move it out of the, Actually, I can just run it, and it's gonna find. It may find this Sydney term on um, in the input box when I run it as well. So let me go ahead and run this. And the first one it found was there, Sydney Councils, and then the next one, the search box Sydney, and then this is where the this is where the um, the input box was, and didn't find the rest of them. I think it might have to do with the color coding. So let me just get out of this search and then type. Sydney again. Let's see what the result becomes like when I do that. Center, Sydney councils. No, it didn't find Sydney. Hmm. Oh, I think it might be because there's the apostrophe and S. So if I do, okay, let me just try again. Sydney and apostrophe S, Sydney's. So let me go ahead and run this. It's gonna. Find that. Okay, there we go. So it found this one, and then it found this one as well, and then it found that one. Okay. So if you have an apostrophe followed by another letter, then uh, that becomes considered as a word. All right. Uh, this is it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you in the next one.